Hey everybody, Alan here. Thought I'd do a video of my eBay trash. So this is my eBay trash. Uh, this is a Imco Turn 340 Turning Center. Uh, I bought it off eBay a couple years ago for like five grand. And kind of off and on over the last couple years as parts would come in or as I figure something out with it, I would work on it and try and get it refurbished and working. Um, I didn't actually walk, work on it two years solid. I worked on it here and there. So I probably have, I don't know, three or four months of, you know, nights and weekends thinking with it in that two-year time period to kind of get it working. So anyways, um, so what, it, what is it? It's a turning center, CNC turning center, obviously. Uh, it's about 340 millimeter swings so or about 14 inch swings so it's about 14 by by 40 in terms of, of swing and distance between centers um, it's got a 15 horsepower spindle uh, the spindle will go from 60 rpm to 60 or 6,000 rather rpm right now it's limited to 2500 rpm because I'm running a manual chuck in it um, I have the power chuck it's right there that's a uh, Rome Duro NC160 power chuck. It's missing the outside jaws, and I've got those coming in this week. And uh, once I get the outside jaws, uh, I'll be able to, uh, I'll have to manufacture a connector, uh, a tube connector to connect the threads on this to the threads on the power draw tube. So it has a hydraulically operated power draw tube uh, behind the chuck. The hydraulics work on that, so it's ready to go. I just need to get the chuck jaws and make a uh, tube connector basically uh, to connect the chuck, the power chuck to the draw tube. It's got an eight position solder tool turret, pretty swank. It's got a uh, hydraulically operated tail stop. It'll put a uh, dead center right through your hand if you're not paying attention. Uh, let's see. It's got a Siemens Sinumeric 810T control, a really old control with a sweet Pit Boy 3000 screen on it. Uh, actually, it says General Numeric on it. That was a uh, partnership between Siemens and Fanuc uh, for some period of time, I guess. And, so they manufactured controls together and whatever. But it's basically a Siemens uh, A10T GA1 control, which is really old. And, you know, so one of the problems I had with the machine was this had lost its mind, lost all its parameters, its PLC program. There's a couple batteries inside there, a lithium ion batteries uh, that back up the memory. And one of them had died. And so all the control software and parameters were kind of just gone. So that was a cute trick. I called Emco to try and get the PLC stuff, and they pretty much told me to go pound sand because the machine is sold. So um, it did come with some paper punch tapes <laughs> and a floppy disk. So the software was actually on those paper punch tapes which I guess was kind of fortunate, um, but I didn't have a paper punch tape reader. So I had to get one of those off of eBay and figure out how they work and wire up a special serial cable to connect it to the serial port on the front of the control and feed the paper punch tapes back in. Uh, so you go into like initial clear mode, which is like a di uh, setup mode on the control. And then you can feed all the PLC software and all the parameters back into the control. So that's what I did. And so once the control came back up, uh, that was problem solved. But that was kind of uh, daunting, you know, figuring out paper punch tape. And it also had a floppy disk with it, too. So some of the software was on a floppy disk and some of it was on the paper punch tape. So I had to dig out a floppy drive, hook up the floppy drive to the computer, and uh, stuck the floppy drive in. And, of course, eh, it wouldn't read the floppy. So I ran check disc on it and got a little lucky and check disc was able to repair the floppy and I was able to read a couple files off that floppy too. So 
Uh, right now I've got it hooked up to my PC and I'm using uh, software to feed code to it basically. It's got a sweet, like I think it's like 40k of usable memory or something. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And it actually really works pretty good. It, 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 it's amazing to me how little the technology has changed. This was uh, this machine is uh, circa 1989, so this was you know produced the year I graduated high school. So it's like I don't know, really old, like me. And so um, you know, it's amazing like how little things have changed. You know, um, much of the way this control works is very similar to a modern control, which I was kind of surprised by once I kind of figured it out. But um, anyways. So that's the control. Um, got this hydraulic power unit. Was missing that. I had to find one of those on eBay. So uh, this is not the correct one for this particular machine, but it works fine. Uh, and I got that for like 500 bucks off of eBay from some machine tool wholesaler who's you know parting it out or whatever. Uh, there's the spindle motor. That's a remote for my air conditioning. This is the cooling fan for the spindle motor. This big black thing right here is the spindle motor. This right here is the tachometer for the spindle motor. It's got some brushes on the tachometer. It's missing one of these brush caps. There's, uh, I think, four brush caps on here. One of them was missing. Luckily, the brush was still in there along with the spring. So I made this brush cap out of nylon on my other lathe. Uh, one of the covers, this cover right here, on the, for the cooling fan motor, uh, was missing. So I 3D printed one on my 3D printer and put that on there. Uh, let's see what else. This is the power draw tube system. Uh, that's the Transformer, step up transformer. So, this machine's made in Austria. It's built like a tank. It's really well built, really, really accurate. Um, but being a European machine, it requires 380 volt three phase instead of the standard American 240 volt three phase. So, I need that transformer in my heat treat oven sitting on top of it because I'm low on space in my little shop here. But, anyways. Um, there's a 40 horsepower rotary phase converter on the side of the house uh, that's, you know, taking the 240 volt single phase and turning it into 240 volt three phase. That goes into this transformer, which steps it up to 380 volt three phase, which is, I guess, the European standard. And then that goes into the machine via that conduit running along the floor there. So. It was missing this transformer too. I had to find that. I really lucked out on that. I found a local machine tool dealer on Craigslist who had like two of them that he was selling for 500 bucks each. So I snatched one of those up. That's a really kind of a rare bird. I mean, it's a 30 kV, a 240 to 380 volt step up transformer. Just so happened he bought out a, a shop that was a woodworking shop that had some Italian woodworking equipment in it. So he had a couple of these laying around. So I snatched one of, the, one of those up. And what else? I think that's about it. But, you know, just kind of finding bits and pieces and putting it back together and, and figuring out how it all works and everything has been kind of a, a lengthy, somewhat drawn-out process. But anyways, it all works now. So I'm going to show you uh, how it cuts, basically. So I'm going to shut this door. Um, I'm going to go over here to the control, we'll go to select mode, we'll go automatic, we'll go actual block, and I think we're ready to go, we'll do the feed rate up to full here. So this thing rapids at about 236 uh, inches per minute. It's kind of a little scary when you're running untested code on it, a bit of a pucker factor for me anyways, I'm not used to that kind of whipping around, but uh, anyway. Let's give it a shot here. We'll hit cycle start and see what happens. So yeah, I'm, gonna ru I'm running this part with coolant, so um, should be able to see okay, but it's 
So what this part is, is um, it's a camera mount for telescope, or part of one. Uh, this is going to be a uh, variable link T-mount adapter for mounting, uh, mounting a camera to a telescope. This is actually part one, side one, so this will have to be flipped. Uh, shoulder will be cut into it and it'll be threaded for uh, T-mount, which is a 42 millimeter by 0 0.75 millimeter. So the feeds and speeds on this are pretty conservative, uh, just because I'm just learning the machine and uh, so I didn't get too crazy on the feeds and speeds. I'm pretty sure I could speed it up quite a bit actually. And I'm running the tools uh, sort of backwards, I guess. So the tool tips face on the rear of the machine. And that's just to cut down on the number of uh, air balls that I get. So I just switched to a 55 degree turning tool for a finish pass on the part. Now it's going to switch to a boring bar. Now I really should have a through bar or through coolant or coolant through bar boring bar, but I don't. So this is kind of silly because it's actually going to be spraying coolant on the outside of the part. So one of the challenges with the working on these telescope adapters is you know, it's really thin, thin wall tubing. And that's where the six job chuck really helps out. Because you know if you're holding on to thin wall with a three jaw, you can deform it if, if it's really thin. Six jaw, that's less of a problem. You can also use soft jaws, you use like uh, pie jaws or something, but uh, six jaw is really handy, but especially a set true six jaw because you can just dial it right in. So I had some issues with leakage. Uh, it was also missing the coolant reservoir, so this is my uh, kind of jury rig coolant reservoir. It's just a tub I got from Home Depot. Uh, but I need to make some modifications because there's a few leaks here and there. Uh, so I need to modify it a little bit. But it works okay. It holds about 20 gallons of uh, coolant. And uh, this thing really sprays the coolant out. It's a hell of a mess with the chips too. I'm glad it's all fully enclosed. I uh, ran the boring bar into the end of the part the other day due to an incorrect tool offset. <clears throat> Instead of breaking the boring bar or shattering the tip or whatever, it just chewed about a quarter of an inch of the part off before I could stop it. it. Had these big huge thick chips. Didn't stop it at all though. It just went right through the part. Of course it's aluminum and it's thin wall so I guess that's to be expected but I don't think my other little lathe would do that. Does a really nice job. Gets a nice uh, surface finish. Here's like one of the parts that I've cut previously with it. Like I said, this is just one side. Once uh, this will be knurled, this 
uh, uh, whatever this edge here will be narrow there'll be a shoulder cut into this side and then it'll be threaded for uh, for a t-mount basically and then there'll be a second part that this slides into file that I got off that floppy disk for the machine uh, came from Siemens and I suspect that the previous owner had the same problem I did with the battery dying and being unable to get the original parameter file from Enco. So they got one from Siemens and while it was pretty close it wasn't 100% correct. So I learned a lot about the parameter settings on this control. So it's going to do a part off now. You just switch to uh, constant surface speed cutting for the part off operation. I'm using uh, Dolphin Part Master for cam. The machine has uh, cycles, but um, <clears throat> they're actually, the option's not included in the control, so I can't use the cycles. It's locked out. I guess because I don't have a license for it or something, so I can't use the cycles. But uh, but I have cam software and, and I've got the cam post processor pre dialed in. That's what I've been spending the last week or so doing is just dialing in the post processor to output code that I consider clean and readable, uh, which it is now. So um, pretty happy with that. So using a Libre for CAD and then I've got a plug-in for a Libre that sends the part to. Uh, Dolphin, and then I do the cam in Dolphin, and then uh, yeah, basically I'll put the code. So Dolphin actually has a, um, a numerical control uh, DNC program with it, a comms program, essentially a terminal program. So once I um, get done with the cam, I, I just send it straight to the machine tool from uh, the Dolphin comms program. So uh, it goes from the serial. I've got a this little computer over here has a USB to serial port adapter and I can just basically I can go from this is the cam software and I can basically just say file uh, send in C program 2 and then select the port configuration for the machine tool I'm using and then it says, uh, you're ready to send it to the tool. I go hit a button on the tool, uh, on the control rather, to get the control ready to accept the file. Then I come back over here, click yes, and it'll send the file over to the, uh, to the tool and be ready to cut. So it's pretty slick. Uh, actually works pretty well. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. That's my, that's my eBay trash. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to actually have it working and being able to make parts with it. It's a pretty big deal. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, more to come.